Let's talk about materials, and in particular how to create the realistic materials into motion. First of all, you need to know that a material is usually made up of a set of parameters divided into categories. And to view them, just click on the material picker, or press the T key on your keyboard, and then click on any surface. Most of the time, these parameters can be modified with specific values, but it's only through the use of textures that we give a material realism. Textures are nothing more than two-dimensional images that, depending on their purpose, simulate visual aspects such as color, roughness, relief and much more. Normally, to create realistic materials, you should search for textures on specialized websites like Polyeven or Ambient CG as this provides all the textures that make up a material. For most materials, the main textures are three – color map, roughness map and normal map. The color map defines the base color of material, and it's thanks to it if we see the pattern of any image repeated on the surface. To apply it into Emotion, I create a new material, assign it to a surface, in the Properties menu I expand the color category, click on the details, then on the rectangle next to the texture, and finally on Open, where I select the downloaded color texture. As you can see, the entire surface is now characterized with the wood flooring image. Moving on, the roughness map defines both how rough a material is, but more importantly, where. It uses a grayscale image that essentially says all the gray areas that lean toward white will be rougher than those that lean toward black, which will be more reflective. It's quite easy to guess that in this image all the gaps between the wood planks will be much less reflective than the wood boards. But, to confirm that, we go back to Emotion, in the Roughness category, click on Details, and just like with the color, insert the great scale texture in the appropriate box. Here is the demonstration of what was just said. Along the gaps the material doesn't reflect, while along the wood boards it does. Before proceeding, however, it's very important to set the intensity of the parameter. The higher the value, the rougher the material, thus less reflective. On the other hand, the closer the value to zero, the more reflecting and less rough the material will be. For each material, it's important to find the right balance. The third essential texture is the normal map, which creates an illusion of depth on the surface of an object, without actually deforming it in any way. It's a texture that is easy to recognize for its bluish color. Into Emotion, it's inserted in the normal category under Details, and just like with Roughness, here too you need to adjust the intensity. The normal map is essential to add realism to the material while keeping it lightweight. In fact, the deformation we perceive on the surface are just optical illusions and not actual 3D distortions. If for any reason the distortion effect isn't sufficient, know that you can modify the normal texture using any of the many texture generators online. Just search for Normal Map Generator on Google. Upload the color texture, select Normal, Download the image and in Twinmotion replace it with the previous one and adjust the intensity as you like. In addition to these textures, there are three others that, depending on the situation, become fundamental for the creation of a realistic material the ambient occlusion map, the displacement map, and the metallic map. The first is essential if you can't use the path tracer due to hardware limitations. This enhances the shadow areas of the material that the standard engine and lumen can't handle on their own. It's a texture similar to the one used for roughness, although with much stronger contrast between blacks and whites. In this case, however, all the grays leaning toward black will be the areas on the surface that will be darkened, unlike those leaning toward white which won't be affected. Into motion is inserted in the ambient collusion category, and its intensity can be adjusted up to a value of 5, which gives the surface more depth. If you use the path tracer engine, it makes no sense to use it. The displacement map supports the normal map when there is a need to create material with strong relief, and it amplifies the two-dimensional deformation effect along the surface. It's inserted in the normal category by activating the parallax checkbox. With the intensity value, you define how deep the surface will sink corresponding to the areas with color leaning toward black. Despite this, it's not a true three-dimensional deformation of the surface, but another optical effect similar to the normal, only much deeper. 
The last useful texture is metallic map, which is helpful when creating materials that aren't metallic across the entire surface. It's a black and white image that's extremely simple to read. The white areas are considered metallic. The black ones are not. Into Emotion is inserted the same way as all the others seen so far. And for it to work, you need to increase the intensity in the metallic category. As you can see, only some areas of the surface are metallic. Thanks to the website mentioned earlier, it's possible to download all the textures needed to create realistic materials, but sometimes you may need to create materials starting from just the color texture. In this case, it's essential to create at least the main textures, namely roughness and normal. I use the same website mentioned before and download the normal and specular images. In Premotion, I assign all the textures to their respective categories, paying close attention to clicking the invert button in the roughness section. The specular map is the opposite of the roughness map, so it's essential to invert the blacks and whites directly into the motion. Of course, if you want, you can also generate the other textures useful for best defining the material, or use more precise and customizable websites. Before ending the video, know that while textures are important for creating realistic materials, it's equally true that they are not always necessary for every material. For example, a marble material doesn't need two dimensional deformations with normal text nor roughness in certain areas of the surface, because it's completely smooth and reflective. In this case, the material will consist only of the color map with a very low roughness value. Another example is low reflective materials, like terrain, rocks or bricks, where it's crucial to insert all the main textures except the roughness, because it has little impact on the final render, as it's almost entirely white. Materials must be realistic, but also functional, so it's always important to find the right balance between quality and performance. To conclude, save every new material you create over time in your user library, so you can save time in your future projects. Thank you so much for watching the video until the very end, and if you want to learn more about using Twinmotion professionally, make sure to subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comments what topic you would like me to cover in the next video. That said, I wish you a good day or evening and see you very very soon. Ciao!